welcome inside Colonial Life Arena in Columbia, South Carolina, the number one team in the country. The undefeated South Carolina Gamecocks set to take on the Alabama Crimson Tide. South Carolina, a chance for a regular season title here today. A win and they clinch at least a share of the title in the SEC and they will lock up the number one seed in the SEC tournament. Alabama in the upper half of the standings having a very strong year, 20 wins overall on the season. Great to have you with us. We're Christy Thomas-Gunny, I am Eric Freed and championship season always comes early here to South Carolina. Well, you talked about the SEC championships, but I know for a fact that these Gamecocks have had April in Cleveland in mind to cut down those nets. They need to have an outstanding point guard to get them there. Of course, Raven Johnson qualifies for South Carolina. Well, when you play for one of the greatest point guards in the history of our game and Coach Don Staley, and she says that Raven Johnson has all the intangibles, you listen, already has a career high 17 assists on the season. 15 rebounds on the season. What does that say? Raven Johnson's going to do whatever it takes to lead this team to victory. And Eric, as she has said publicly, she is on a revenge tour this season. She's played that way. The X Factor for South Carolina runs the show. All gas, no breaks, according to her head coach, Dawn Staley. You can see she fills up the stat sheet in a variety of ways. And there's a player for Alabama who fills up the stat sheet in a variety of ways. Sarah Ashley Barker. But the greatest compliment I can give Sarah Ashley Barker is the stats don't tell half the story on this young lady's game. A leader on both ends of the floor. Her team feeds off her not only tenacity, but her willingness to do whatever it takes to win. Her career highs are all this season. Her shooting percentage is up. Her rebounds are up. Sarah Ashley Barker needs to stay on the floor for the Crimson Tide this evening. One player who will not be on the floor tonight is Camilla Cardoso, the post for South Carolina, the leading scorer and leading rebounder. She is out today. She's in cheerleader mode for Sandstorm, so she's all in right now for South Carolina. But really, according to Dawn Staley, a little wear and tear, a little rest, so not even dressed here tonight. The fans are ready. They're always ready in this building. We're ready. South Carolina and Alabama. The opening tip is controlled by Ashlyn Watkins, who gets the start here with Cardoso out tonight. Here's Johnson. And Alabama immediately going to a 2-3 matchup off of the jump ball. They have not played a lot of zone this year, but when you're playing undefeated in number one South Carolina, you've got to mix things up. Shot clock. Now down to eight, Kitts can't handle it, and it's picked up by Aaliyah Nye for Alabama. Nye, an outstanding three-point shooter, 91 made threes on the season as you take a look at the Alabama starting five. Jessica Timmons has been playing very well at the one and the two. Loyal McQueen starts at the one, and there is the freshman post. Essence Cody working inside for Alabama. Back the other way comes Carolina. Two trips, two turnovers for South Carolina. Watkins fighting hard, getting the tie up. And they're going to say Nye had contact with it when she was out of bounds. So it will be South Carolina basketball. Great hustle play by Nye and also by Ashland Watkins. One thing Alabama talked a lot today in their shoot around was transition defense, trying to slow down this high octane South Carolina offense. And again, going back to the 2 3 matchup zone in the half court. Here's the starting five. Bree Hall hitting 46% on threes in SEC play. Pow Pow leading the team second in the country in all games this season from three point land at 48%. She looks for the two, doesn't get it. And here comes Alabama. McQueen back out to Timmons. Nye is going to get called for the travel. What are some of the things that Dawn Staley wants to see from her team here tonight? coming off a victory last time out against Georgia where they are down seven at halftime. She just wants to see better execution, and that's the pace in which they execute. It's the reads that they're making. Again, they worked against the 2-3 matchup today, wanting to get to the ball to the high post. It's the decision-making from the high post that she's eager to see. Already three turnovers for South Carolina. Now rejected by Pow Pow. Good defensive play by Tina Pow Pow. It'll be Alabama basketball. Well, number one team in the country in blocks, and you're used to it being the bigs for <laughs> South Carolina, not the guard Pow Pow, though. Yeah, with Cardoso on the bench, Pow Pow's like, I got you, Camilla. 
One thing that's going to be key for Alabama here this evening is shot selection. We've talked about how South Carolina wants to get out and transition. Offensive rebound, second chance here for Alabama. Timmons trying to work on Pow Pow. Little fadeaway, won't go, and Watkins has it for South Carolina. Here comes Johnson, always wants to push. Bree Hall. Hall on the drive, gets it to jump for the first two. So a sloppy start for South Carolina, but they get the game's first points. Bree Hall averaging just under 10 points a game. But well, Eric, you mentioned Camille Cardozo not dressing this evening, and so much of the early offense for South Carolina in recent games have gone through her. She's the safety valve, what Don Staley calls her, because when in doubt, just throw it up to Cardozo. Five on the shot clock. Barker, good pass inside. Cody rejected by Watkins. No reset of the shot clock, and it's a shot clock violation. Interesting here, Dawn Staley will go to her bench early. Sakima Walker will come on, and Chloe Kitts will come out. So Dawn didn't like something she saw with Kitts. And when you have 599 wins, <laughs> you know what works and what doesn't. Going for career win number 600 here today. Absolutely. And in some ways, I think this is a better matchup for Alabama to have Walker in the game. It's an easier matchup for the freshman, Essence Cody, versus the more agile Chloe Kitts. Johnson. Walker back out to Hall. Swing around, Johnson dropped it down to Watkins. Won't drop, tips no good. Picked up by Barker. Into the hands of Cody. We've seen Timmons play the one. Right now, she's called for the foul. Got her foot out there, so a foul called. Actually, it's Cody on the foul. That's her first. Now, that's something when you look for Christy Curry here. When they walk in the gym, you don't see Camilla Cardozo warming up. I, I think as Essence, Cody's the one who's like, oh, the 6'7 the, the All-American candidate's not out there. But Christy Curry's someone who's piled up a lot of wins in her career as well. There's just a lot of wins in this arena here this <laughs> evening. How many wins did you have in your coach? So let's add that to the mix. Um, it's still not going to. You weren't in the 500 <laughs> club, I know, but no. they were quality wins. We got a good game here. We'll focus on that. <laughs> the change of the subject. Picked up by Timmons. McQueen on her left. Timmons blocked by Raven Johnson. Into the hands of Pow Pow. Johnson takes it at Barker. No good on the follow. That's Watkins flying in once. Tried it twice, saved it, threw it off the foot of Cody. It'll be South Carolina basketball. And here's the key for Essence Cody, the freshman. She can't watch the shots. She immediately, when a shot is leaves someone's hands, has to go into the box out. Got really lucky that time that South Carolina wasn't able to capitalize on the offensive rebound. Going to do some quick math right here as Watkins goes out. The two teams so far, Christy, are combined one for 17 from the floor. They're warming up, Eric. They're just warming you up. Are, you are the glasses half full right now. I'm in, I'm in awe. Sonia Fagan in the game. Fagan wasting no time. Pow Pow on the run. No. Well, when these two teams were combined one for 17, that's better when th where they are now. <laughs> Bama still looking for their first points. And South Carolina's going to have numbers here. Ball on the pull-up. And Eric, that's why I said shot selection so key. Great shot opportunity for Sarah Ashley Barker at the rim, but two players got caught behind the ball. Easy transition for South Carolina. Timmons defended by Hall. Gets the screen from Cody. Hand off to McQueen. Once again, shot clock winds down. McQueen on the drive. Good pass to Cody. That won't drop. Alabama 0 for 9 from the field. Well, and that's where those early shot blocks of South Carolina is affecting Alabama when they get to the rim. And that pass 
is thrown out of bounds. You know what we need? We need a cleanse. We need to flush it. We need a reset. Dawn Staley would agree. When you're closing in on a milestone, 600 wins, it's time to take a peek back. We'll do that when we come back. SEC Women's Basketball is presented by Regions, the official bank of the SEC. Let's take a trip down memory lane, shall we? Dawn Staley, the player, I always like to throw these out there because it reminds this generation that for as great a coach she is, she may have been a better player, but I'm just that, that's how good a coach she is and a great player. And she's had great teams here at South Carolina. And the effect really hard to measure, but let's try, shall we? Before dawn and after dawn, the number of seasons, the number of titles, a chance to add to that total here today. Of course, the tournament's coming up down the line. This is what Christy Thomas Scuddy talked about at the top of the telecast. Their sights are set on national championships. They've got two, and they are the front runner to compete for a third yet again this year. So I'm going to summarize everything we just saw. Thank you. The Don Staley effect equals championships. It has been a championship mindset since she arrived in Columbia, and all she does is prepare these young women to compete at the highest level and cut down nets. Now, I must say that the first five minutes and 32 seconds will not go into the Dawn Staley time capsule. Just saying of great memories at South Carolina. Now, if we're going glass half full here, they've shut Alabama out so far. If you're looking glasses half full from Alabama's point of view, it's a two possession game at the five minute media. Absolutely. Should I keep going? Well, I was going to say a lot of learning opportunities as they continue <laughs> yes. to get ready for yes. March. Class is in session. Out of the timeout, Timmons knocks it down for two. So after the slow start, 0 for 9 from the field, Bama on the board. Here's Hall to Johnson. And I like the move by Chris Curry out of that break. Getting the freshman as it's Cody. Just let her rest nice. and recover on the bench a little bit. She's didn't rush this whole game so far. Nice finish by Sanaya Fagan, who's averaging six and a half points a game. Malaysia Full Wiley is into the game, so if the game needs a little bit of a jump start, that is the player to bring on the floor to provide the spark. One thing South Carolina has done well in the half court defense is deny passing lanes. It's really caused the Crimson Tide offense to get stagnant. Timmons, no, Fagan the rebound. There's Johnson for Hall. Has full Wiley in the corner. Fagan thought about the pass, thought twice about it, and it slipped out of her hands. McQueen trying to score on Hall. Barker for three. That bounces out of bounds. Saw Gianna Cunningham into the game as well for Alabama. And Alabama just trying to switch up the mojo right now, extending into their 2-2-1 full court. Here is Full Wiley. Full Wiley and Johnson on the court together for the moment. Pow Pow and Tessa Johnson getting set to check in. Fagan, too strong in the drive. Barker on the boards. Barker averaging six rebounds a game, so she does well on the boards to go along with those 17 points a game, which is seventh in the conference. As a size advantage on Phil Wiley, who is standing the ground in the crowd, and takes notice. Again, the shot clock winding down. Nine. On the cut, no getting this one. Turnover on the band. Fifth. Well, credit Gamecock defense because they are getting through screens, they're getting over the on ball screen, so Alabama can't create any kind of advantage in the half court offense. Christy Curry's team last time out, they beat Auburn on Sunday 67 61. They were down 10 after three. They outscored their rivals 25 to nine in the fourth quarter. And turnovers in that fourth quarter, eight for Auburn, zero for Alabama. You talk about one of your best quarters of the season that came in, in that last game for Alabama. When something to watch if you're a Crimson Tide fan, they have not won a game in SEC play when they've had 17 or more turnovers in the game. Not a good start for them. 
They've got five here in the first quarter. Parker back the other way. Parker trying to take it on the freshman, and she'll score easily. Sarah Ashley Barker with her first points of the game. And Eric, one thing you see every time from South Carolina is their five-player rim running, getting down the floor as quickly as possible, pulling defenders with them. Power into the game and knocks down the three. Mentioned before, 48% on the season, 41% from three. In SEC play, knocked down five in the win against Georgia last time out. Essence Cody back on the floor for Alabama. If I'm Alabama, I like this matchup with Tessa Johnson on Barker. Dejanae Williams also into the game for Alabama. Trying to find Weathers on the cut. South Carolina gets the block, then it's deflected out of play. It'll be Alabama basketball with two seconds on the shot clock. Essence Cody has to be ready to score when she's getting those dumps right now. She's been gathering instead of going up quick and strong, and that's allowed South Carolina to recover defensively. Weathers leans in, got iron. And here comes Pow Pow, final minute of the quarter. Johnson, back out for Pow Pow. Chloe Kitts back in the game, we'll try it mid-range and get it. So Kitts went to the bench early. I thought she did a lot of little things well in that Georgia comeback win for South Carolina last time out. But went to the bench early here in this game, back on the floor here late in the first quarter. It's a little bit of role shifts without Camila Cardozo on the floor for the bigs. They're used to following her lead, and I think that's probably a message received by the post here once they have that seat early. Cody on the inside. South Carolina will hold for one. Four. Tip out of bounds by Barker. 1.5 to go in the quarter. Substitutions here for Alabama as Timmons and Nye come back into the game. Watkins checks in for Walker. Alabama switching back to player to player defense here, but I would be on the lookout for Watkins. Maybe some type of alley oop for her to go up and get it. For Wiley, that will do it for the first quarter. South Carolina and Alabama defensive battle so far. Hey, glasses half full. Now, speaking of being full, Alabama, they got the royal treatment for a team meal last night. That's next. Alabama making the trip here to South Carolina. That means it's a homecoming for Loyal McQueen from Florence, South Carolina, and her family, big family, came out here to Columbia to put together the family team meal for the entire team. What was on the menu here? What were some of the things? There was a special family beef stew. Macaroni and cheese. Mac and cheese, peach cobbler, yams. There was something else in there too, but I'm like. Just stop, because I'm getting hungry. <laughs> they said it was fantastic and a good way to bring back Loyal to South Carolina to take on the number one team in the country. A lot of family and friends turning out to see Loyal and Alabama take on South Carolina. This is a very tough road venue, of course, because South Carolina has won 55 straight home games. But Alabama's been pretty good on the road this year. And sometimes when you just have a connected team, you see that because they're focused just on the game. They're not distracted, and for all the teachers out there, excuse me, but by schoolwork, by everything else at home, and that's just what the Crimson Tide have done. They're connected, they seem to execute better on the road, and the wins is stand alone. South Carolina, 43 consecutive wins in regular season conference play. Dawn Staley's team struggled in that first quarter, 28% from the field. On the flip side, they held Alabama to 19% shooting in the first quarter. When I think Essence Cody has to get going down low, they've got her some good looks in the paint. She just hasn't been able to finish. Foul's called on Tessa Johnson on the reach. Johnson trying to deny Aliyah Nye. Nye has to get going because Christy Curry thought this Alabama team needed to make a bunch of threes to win this game here today. They were 0 for 4 in the first quarter. 
And what was the number she threw out to you? 12. 12 made threes. 12 made threes. This is a Crimson Tide team that has averaged 25 three-point attempts in their last five games. So it's not out of the question, but they've got to start connecting. Chloe Kitts gets the steal. Goes in for two. Turnover's an issue for Alabama. That's seven so far for the Crimson Tide. They average 15 a game. Timmons. Well, Timmons got her. Oh, nope, they got her. She drugged that pivot foot. <laughs> Alabama will go to the bench again. They got to get the personnel straight, though. I think McQueen's going to come out. So that means Timmons is going to be on the floor. And Timmons has been playing the point guard position a little bit more and playing it pretty well. Yeah, she starts off as the two guard, the off guard. And then when Laurel McQueen needs a break or Krista Curry wants to switch things up, she moves Jessica Timmons over to the point guard. And in that Auburn game, she was huge down the stretch for the Crimson Tide, really solidified the offense. Johnson, good shooter, buries a three. 19 three pointer made for the freshman. And South Carolina's up double digits. Barker on the dish, too strong by Cody. And a rebound to Johnson for Pow Pow. For Wiley on the feed, Watkins on the reception. Timeout called by Alabama. South Carolina starting the quarter playing a little bit more like the number one undefeated team in the country. They've outscored Alabama 7-0 to start the second. All right, sorry, thanks. Yeah, Alabama so far 0 for 4 from the three-point line and trailing by 12, forcing an early Alabama timeout here in the second. Well, I think the problem for Alabama in the half-court offense is twofold. One, South Carolina's beaten to the spots in terms of the screen, so they can't create any kind of advantage. And Alabama's not able to get downhill with the ball, and that's where they get their three-point opportunities. They create offense for one another off a of dribble penetration. And so far, South Carolina's been really good in the half-court defense. Ice cold start heating up for South Carolina just a bit here as we get going here in the second quarter. South Carolina has won the last 21 meetings against Alabama. Is that part of the Don effect? <laughs> yes, it is. We'll add that to the next Don effect <laughs> graphic. There's Timmons. That won't drop for three. Cody kept it alive. Watkins calls off for Wiley. And hands it to Pow Pow. Off the fingertips of Watkins. Turnover number five for South Carolina. I mean, even when Alabama forces a turnover, South Carolina's hedging on the ball handler, so Alabama can't get out and run. Foul's called on Full Wiley for South Carolina. Well, coming up next, the rematch. Auburn, LSU at the PMAC. We all remember what happened in the first meeting between these two teams when Auburn had the 67-62 win on January 14th. We had nine to turn around. That was deflected and then knocked out of bounds the South Carolina basketball. You want to predict what's going to happen in the rematch? Because I think LSU is going to have a little bit of a chip on their shoulder. And by the way, LSU, they are finding their defense. They're finding their complete game here as we get deeper into February, aren't they? Well, have you met Kim Mulkey? Because if they didn't find it, she was going to make sure. Sir. Exactly. <laughs> they got it. Now, I, again, I'm eager to see, because Auburn has the ability to take you out of your offense. They play so physical. I'm eager to see the adjustments that LSU has this time at home. That'll be game two of our doubleheader. Coming up for Baton Rouge when we're done here in Columbia. Another miss for Alabama. Their struggles from the floor continue. Now three for 20 against the South Carolina defense. But Eric, two of nine on shots right at the rim. That's the shot blocking effect of South Carolina. On the drive by Johnson, she's fouled, and she'll go to the free throw line to shoot a couple. Cody picks up her second personal foul. And Alabama's a little shorthanded in the post here today because they're down a player, Naomi Jones, the freshman, 
turns out she's going to be out for the season with a lower leg injury. So Alabama with Essence Cody going to the bench already down the post, and their starting post has two fouls. Well, and the thing about Jones is that it's not just five more fouls. That's an athletic post player for Christy Curry that she doesn't have at her disposal against, obviously, a very athletic post core for South Carolina. Johnson at the free throw line did not score in six minutes of play against Georgia. Mentioned that Georgia game before, seven at the half. The largest halftime deficit of the season for South Carolina, but second half scoring 42-21 in favor of South Carolina. Johnson for Wiley, what's she gonna do? She's gonna try to spin, and McQueen was ready for her. Nye was there to help, and Alabama forces the turnover. Barker steps into a three. The putback won't drop. That's another one missed at point blank range on the follow up by Cunningham and a foul called on Alabama. I mean, this is where someone on the Crimson Tide team just needs to tell everybody reset. You see frustration across all the faces. And this is what South Carolina does to you. They take away option one, option two. You've got to be patient in your half court, but you've got to stay together, and execute by setting screens and making sharp cuts. First foul on Timmons. South Carolina has outscored Alabama 9 nothing here in this second quarter. Chloe Kitts has the mismatch down low. Watkins will try it from outside. Barker's got the rebound. Barker in traffic, no, picked up by Johnson. Johnson to Watkins. Watkins hangs in the air and gets the two. Ashland struggled last game, three points, three rebounds, just 15 minutes. She had three fouls in the first half. She had averaged 12 and a half points and 10 rebounds over the previous five games. We thought maybe she'd come out here a little determined that she is there with the block on the perimeter, but that turns it over. Well, if by determined, you mean that Eric Freed kind of called her out to the <laughs> did no such to Don Staley. <laughs> Eric asked Don Staley a question about, hey, do you expect Watkins to come out on fire tonight? And she goes, hang on a second. She brings Ashlyn over to the table, and Eric asks her, hey, you seem to get a little frustrated. <laughs> and I was <laughs> like, don't poke the bear. <laughs> Paul Wiley gets called for the offensive foul. So Full Wiley picks up her second. Kitts will go to the bench. Walker comes on. Full Wiley's got to check out. Barker heads out. Both teams with a bunch of substitutions. Well, Alabama going really small here by bringing in Meg Newman. That's out of bounds. Now, just to finish your story, I was asking oh, Dawn. True. I didn't expect her to bring Ashlyn over. I think Dawn wanted someone else to, to give the message because, you know, maybe Dawn's just like, if she's not listening to me, maybe she'll listen to somebody else. It not that I'm someone to listen to. It's Dawn's daily after all. But Well, again, I don't think Ashlyn's ever going to forget you, but it is February. <laughs> she did give me a look. <laughs> yes, it is February, and coaches have been saying the same things a lot of times, so it is sometimes nice to hear it from someone else. I just don't think Ashlyn appreciated that issue. <laughs> Inquiring minds want to know, Christy. Hall is denied. Here is Watkins. Was it something I said? <laughs> She's got six to lead South Carolina in scoring to go along with five rebounds. 13-0 South Carolina here in the second quarter. Timmons, that's short. Johnson's got the rebound. Here's Raven Johnson. Finds Hall. That three won't drop. Picked up by Timmons. I got to give Walker credit, though. Walker is rim running so hard right now for South Carolina. Weathers denied by Johnson. Johnson's played well here, and she's earning some additional minutes more than she would probably normally get. Effort makes up for a lot of things, and if Alabama's going to have success. They've got to be able to take advantage of the switching in the half court, which plays like from Tessa Johnson are eliminating right now. Bree Hall gets called for the foul. All right, interesting move here. Essence Cody coming into the game now for Alabama with the two personal fouls. 
Well, we talked to Christy Curry about Essence Cody specifically today. She said, hey, she's going to learn a lot. She's going to grow up a lot this evening. I think she would rather a couple other lessons be taught to Essence at this point in the game. But again, the most athletic and deep team that Alabama's faced so far this season in terms of post play. And that is still the case even with Cardoso out here tonight. And it's the versatility of the skill sets of the bigs for South Carolina that make this so difficult. McQueen, good move to get free, but then Hall got the block. McQueen thought she was fouled and then South Carolina turns it over again. That's number nine for the game cuts. Well, if you follow Don Staley in the media in the last two weeks, Don has been very honest about frustrations with the team. They're winning, and she said, I'd much rather have lessons through wins. She said, but we're not where we need to be, and that's what she keeps pushing this team to be sharper and more focused, and I think case in point is the turnovers here this evening. Parker back on the floor for Alabama. Three and a half to go in the first half. Alabama looking for their first points of the quarter. Sarah Ashley Barker can't provide him. Another one that rolls off the rim. And here's Pow Pow. Up ahead, Johnson. Johnson in traffic. Somehow got it on the rim and somehow got the rebound from her backside, but taken away by Alabama. Deflected by Pow Pow. Good defensive play. Three on one the other way for South Carolina. Hall. 15 nothing South Carolina here in the second quarter. McQueen denied by Fagan. Hall with a half step on Cody. Another timeout called by Alabama. 17 nothing South Carolina here in the second quarter. The lead is now 22. Where if you want to win championships, it starts with defense. Pow, pow, active hands, stopping the Crimson Tide. Three on one break. Bree Hall says, I got it with the pull up jumper. Just beautiful lead pass, and Bree Hall knows what to do when she gets that deep in transition. Cody with the two fouls had no choice but to let her go as well, and that forced a second Alabama timeout. Eric, we've talked about how South Carolina is number one in blocks in the country. But what you don't recognize all the time is how the blocks affect the team in terms of their half court execution. We've seen Alabama miss eight of 10 shots at the rim. That's that shot blocking ability of South Carolina. Already seven blocks in this game. And a reminder, you would think seven blocks in the first half. How many does Camila Cardoso have? She has zero because she's out today. That just goes to the depth and the post depth that you talked about. But it's not just the post. They're getting blocks on the perimeter as well here against Alabama. It's the athleticism of South Carolina. Their closing speed. You've seen Alabama have a couple times where they had a step maybe to get to the rim or get the shot off, and that closing speed by South Carolina has eliminated any advantage. Parker trying to get it to McQueen. That's deflected by Fagan. Four on the shot clock. Parker against Johnson with two. Gets tripped up, lost the out of bounds. And it'll be South Carolina basketball. Twelfth turnover for Alabama. One thing that will help Alabama is if they step two passes right now. They're waiting for balls to come to them, and this is where South Carolina is getting deflection and shooting gaps. I mean, if I'm South Carolina, I go right at Cody. Get the third foul. There's Watkins taking it at Cody. What a strong finish. And Watkins lets everyone know how strong that was. McQueen finally. So South Carolina scored the first 19 points of the quarter before McQueen got the bucket. Pow Pow for Watkins. Too strong. Barker tapped it. McQueen grabbed it. 90 seconds to go in the first half. Timmons got into the body of Pow Pow and got it for two.
Tip by nine, 18 to shoot for South Carolina. Well, Ashlyn Watkins is on a mission here this evening. Reverse pivot face up and just drives by, drives by Cody for the two. And it's the intensity in which she is playing, but yet the soft touch when she gets to the rim. Defended by Barker, taken back by Fagan. Fagan, nice move inside, had the size advantage, took advantage for the two. Just a tough matchup there for Barker against Fagan. If I'm South Carolina, if I see that matchup again, I go to it down low. Final minute of what's been a dominant quarter for South Carolina. Timmons was fouled on the drive. And this is what Christy Curry told us today. She likes moving Timmons to the point position because she is so good at getting downhill at creating offense for the Crimson Tide. This is an Alabama team that averages 74 points a game. That's good for sixth in the SEC. The South Carolina defense, number one in points allowed in the country, 54 points a game. Number one in Division I in field goal percentage defense, 31%. Number one, Division I, as Christy mentioned, in blocks per game. Sensing a theme. I just didn't know if you picked up on it. I think you did. I think they're pretty good. <laughs> I thought South Carolina might try to get a two for one there. Instead, just going to execute here in the half court. Johnson goes to work with 10 on the shot clock. Pow, pow. Leans in, no. Walker got the offensive rebound. Johnson launches, misses the three. Fagan was fouled on the follow. Alabama got caught watching the shot, but also if you don't have a body and you're not solidly in South Carolina, you're going to lose that battle because that's just how hard South Carolina pursues those awards. Fagan at the line. She's been really good from the floor. Played 13 minutes a game, part of that rotation that Dawn Staley, when she has the full roster, she'll play all 11. Doesn't have the full roster here today. Alabama with a quick push. Timmons, no. Tipped, batted around, grabbed by Pow Pow, who's down on the floor. Tie up. Possession arrow will give it to South Carolina with two seconds to go. South Carolina players rushing in to check on Pow Pow because she fell to the floor a little awkwardly yeah, she there. Did. Raven Johnson's checking on her, and I don't know if Pow Pow is 100% right now. And the bench recognizing that. Johnson will come on and Pow Pow will check out. They go for the long pass, tipped by Cunningham. That brings the clock down to eight tenths. Now with eight tenths, ball in the front court, South Carolina has time to catch and shoot. They may go to the monitor here to just confirm the time. They are. Don Staley's trying to get her team over to her so she can have a pseudo timeout while they go to the clock to check, while they go to the monitor to check. And by pseudo, I mean she ain't calling it. <laughs> so both teams will huddle up, and Tiffany Bird will go to the monitor. And let's see if it will be eight tenths on the clock or a little bit more. Ashlyn Watkins coming into the game as well, so they could be looking for a tip. You can, you do have enough time with eight tenths to catch and shoot. Doesn't have to be a tip. Anything over point three can be a catch and shoot. And again, I say, when it's skinny in the shot clock or game clock, that means it's Ashlyn Watkins' time. So they are at the monitor confirming how much time is on the game clock before halftime. Reminder, coming up at halftime, Dari, Steffi, Nikki standing by in the studio. They'll take you through the Florida-Mizzou game. They'll get you ready for LSU and Auburn, the rematch, which is game two of our doubleheader coming up tonight here on the SEC Network. They're going to put four tenths, it looks like, back on the clock. Indeed, 1.2 to go.
Eric, you talked about how good South Carolina is. If there's been any blemish on them, it's been free throw shooting. So if you're Alabama, you might even think about committing a foul here and not trying to give up the two points. Barker got the deflection and launches just after the horn. That will do it for the first half. What a quarter for South Carolina. Ashland Watkins in the half at eight points and six rebounds. But in that quarter, South Carolina outscored Alabama 22 to five. They're up 22 at the half. Dari, it's all yours. This was the scene at halftime. The annual teddy bear toss here at Colonial Life Arena turned into quite a tradition where fans bring in teddy bears and the bears will then be given out to bring a little love and joy to a lot of kids. Fans you bought and talent. Yeah, you, you bought a couple of bears for us. We were hit by a few. That's it was your first time. You just got to just be prepared. But a great tradition here for the number one team in the country that Struggled to get things going offensively. Both teams did, but that defense for South Carolina holding Alabama to 11 first half points. Just outstanding. Absolutely. If, if your offense is struggling, you go back to the defense. You go back to the glass, and that's what South Carolina excels at. They get the ball inside to their bigs. They started getting easy scoring opportunities, which definitely opened up the offense. Ashlyn Watkins was just a beast on both ends of the floor. When she can get that first step on any big in this league, she's going to score. South Carolina outscoring Alabama 22 to 5 in that second quarter. South Carolina shot 53% in the quarter. And you see the paint points 18 in total for South Carolina. All right, adjustments if you're Alabama. 11 points in that first half, fewest by an SEC team in a half this season. What's at the top of the list for Christy Curry? Well, I think it's first of all, forget the first half. It is a true reset. It comes down to execution in the half court. Timmons did a good job, as we just saw, getting downhill and creating some offense for the Crimson Tide. That's what they need, but they've got to be able to create advantages off the bounce in order to get the three-point game going. Oh, Timmons will go to the free throw line, the foul on Pow Pow, her first. Jessica, who played up the road at NC State for a couple of years. She's from Charlotte. So a bit of a homecoming for her as well. First season with Alabama after those two seasons with NC State. Three points a game last year with the Wolfpack, better than 11 points a game this year for Alabama. She's been an impact transfer for them. Absolutely, and then you talk about Sarah Ashley Barker's development. That speaks to the development of the Crimson Tide staff and what they're doing with these players individually. Essence Cody had a really tough first half, but even her improvement as SEC play has gone along has been really nice to watch. Kitts was denied, stuck with it, and then a foul is called on South Carolina on Chloe Kitts. That's her first. If you're just joining us, Dawn Staley without Camilla Cardoso tonight. She is in street clothes on the bench. Dawn's uh, medical uh, de definition was she's just dealing with a few things, but it just feels like and it sounds like after Cardoso went and joined her national team in her native Brazil, played three games there, traveled back, still played against Georgia. There's just some soreness, a little tired and just trying to take care of the leading scorer and leading rebounder here tonight by giving her a night off. Well, as I said, this is a Gamecock program that builds for March and April. So I think rest is part of building towards March and April right now when it comes to Cardozo. Parker on the drive on the cut on the baseline out of bounds play. The foul is on Kitts, so two on Kitts here in the early minutes. And now a turnover. Nye back the other way with Timmons and Timmons. With Kitts back defensively, unable to finish, she'll be Alabama basketball. I would have liked to say Nye looked to be more aggressive there in transition, try to take it herself. But if you're an Alabama fan, you got to be ecstatic. Two possessions offensively, two scores, as well as two stops defensively. McQueen back out to Nye. Nye 0 for 4 from the field in the first half. And that pass won't get all the way through to McQueen. Intercepted by Raven Johnson. Johnson will go to the free throw line. The foul on Barker. 
well, stop me if you heard this before, but Knight got almost to the rim, and then there was a rotation by Ashlyn Watkins, which took away her scoring opportunity. She tries to make a pass across court, which is not going to happen against this Gamecock defense. That allowed Raven Johnson to get out and run. Raven Johnson to the free throw line. I think an interesting thing that Dawn Staley talked about with you this morning was getting Chloe Kitts and Ashlyn Watkins on the same page. She thinks sometimes they don't play very well together. Now, this is a team that's undefeated, number one in the country, but there are still things and combinations that need some work. Well, if you think about the beginning of this season, they both were fours, meaning they were both power forwards. So they don't play a lot together. But then through sickness and injury, as well as Car Camila Cardozo going and playing with the Brazilian team, that's given them opportunities. And I think, again, it, this is a different lineup with those two in. I think they're defensively they're better because they can get up and pressure the ball. They can switch one through five. They play at a faster pace even on the offensive end. So I like this matchup for the Gamecocks going down. It just gives them another way to challenge a team and beat a team. Right there, Watkins and Kitts could not connect. And there's Timmons tiptoeing down the lane for two. Six nothing start to the quarter for Alabama. Remember, it was a 19 nothing start to the second quarter for South Carolina. Kitts. Hall will launch for three. Chloe Kitts with the putback. Nice job by Kitts. Barker's trying to box her out, so she just gives a little separation so that she can use her height advantage to get that O board and put back. Alabama trying to get Nye going right now. 91 threes on the season. Nothing happening. Watkins trying to go back the other way, then couldn't save it and turns it over. It will be Alabama basketball. So shot goes up, and look at the top of your screen. You see Barker stick her butt out, but Kitts doesn't go into it. She maintains that space. Chloe goes up and gets it and gets the put back. So you're saying it was a pretty savvy play by the sophomore, Chloe Kitts? I think so. Either that or it was a lucky bounce. <laughs> I'm going to give her the credit. Go with savvy play. <laughs> sounds better. Entry pass. Cody, oh, good job. And there's Kitts with the block. Barker sticks with it, shot clock expires, and it'll be South Carolina basketball. That was great effort by Essence Cody to get the seal, get into the body of the defender, but fumbled the pass and had to kick it over. Not much you can do with the way South Carolina is protecting the rim here this evening. Well, Wiley into the game for South Carolina. Pow Pow drops it down to Kitts. Kitts fighting. Swing it over to Pow Pow. Can't get the three. Kitts continues to work hard on the glass but saves it back to Nye. Nye to McQueen, McQueen too strong. Timmons will launch the three. No, Kitts has it. Numbers back the other way. Alabama recovers and here's Pow Pow. Timmons oh. looking around to switch off with one of the bigs because she knows she's got the mismatch against Chloe Kitts down low. Pow, pow, on the run. Five for Pow, pow. Watt gets in Hall, setting the pace with eight each for South Carolina. Timmons over for Wiley, who got a piece of it. And a foul is going to be called underneath on Essence Cody. And for Cody, that's her third. That will get Meg Newman into the game. Sarah Ashley Barker heads to the bench, and she's going down beyond the bench and down the runway. Looks like she's grabbing at her head a little bit here, so we'll keep an eye on Sarah Ashley Barker, who is going out of eyesight right now. Well, Wiley to Watkins. Too strong. South Carolina doing a really good job on, the, job on the offensive glass, getting second chance opportunities, and it'll be a trip to the line. Well, that was just a great curl by Watkins to get to the rim, good lead pass as well. She just could finish on the first opportunity. Anchor, anchor, 
Watkins at the free throw line, 53%. Don Staley stressing to Ashland, just keep your composure. Don't worry about fouls. You get five of them for a reason. Just play through it. When I think with the depth that South Carolina has in the post, these posts, these bigs should just play free for them. I think that's Watkins picking up her first personal foul. Well, the concern for Alabama right now is the status of Sarah Ashley Barker who came out of the game and walked slowly off the court back to the locker room area. I don't know if she made it all the way back there. She is out of our eyesight right now. As Christie has mentioned, Barker, she's the catalyst for this Alabama team. 20 wins on the season, tied for fifth in the SEC. Barker, 17 points a game, six rebounds, three assists a game. At first, I thought she was just frustrated when she walked off, but then I saw the trainer follow her. I thought I saw when she walked back, she was just grabbing at her head a little bit. Watkins, and a block is called on Newman. Newman thought she was there. The official disagrees. Honestly, I thought Meg Newman was there, but it was that little jerk right before the contact that caused her to... Saying it was on the pass, so no shots here for South Carolina. Alabama let down a little bit defensively. Bree Hall took advantage and made the three. Alabama was still wondering what was going on with the officials making that call, so they were not set defensively at all. Heads up play by South Carolina. That's tipped out of bounds by Full Wiley. They'll stay with Alabama. 5 10 to go here in the third quarter. South Carolina has not trailed. They got off to a one for 12 start from the field in the first quarter, still led by five, had a very strong second quarter. And now pushing back here in the third after a slow start. Kimmins defended by Hall. Hall up to the assignment. Weathers against Pow Pow. Weathers needs help. Has Nye launches a deep three and makes it. Aliyah Nye has her first three of the game. Well, I think that possession is just case in point what South Carolina does to a team. It caused Alabama just to go one on one. You were saying, go ahead, finish your thought. <laughs> for Wiley three, you were saying. But to go one on one versus working to create for one another, but Nye bailed him out. And um, I was actually going to say triple four last. For Wiley's had a really it's quiet night offensively, but her defense has been on point. You see how harassing she can be when she's the on-ball defender. Weathers back to Nye. Nye defended by Watkins. Now McQueen. McQueen, good finish for two. Between McQueen and Timmons, they've been able to get downhill and get to the rim and finish in this third quarter. Back to the 2-3 matchup for Alabama. Nye into the front court. Inside of four minutes to go in the quarter. McQueen. Here's Nye. Nye will launch again. Not this time. Kitts is fouled, grabbing the rebound. And that will get us to immediate timeout. Well, Eric, I mentioned that in terms of offense, Full Wiley's been pretty quiet. One of two, because it's what we've learned to expect from this dynamic freshman, but had the big answer a moment ago. Deep from three, hands down. She elevates, she knocks it down. This freshman came to play. Back here in Columbia, South Carolina, holding Alabama to 23 points so far. Three and a half to go in the third quarter. One way to do that is have nine block shots by eight different players so far for South Carolina. And that does not even take into account how many other shots they affected with their length. You knew the tone was set when Pow Pow started the game with the block. 
from the guard position. But when Alabama's had the advantage offensively, whether it's been dribble penetration or dribble penetration and dumps, the closing speed of South Carolina has either gotten the block or affected the shots, and that's allowed the Gamecocks to then turn out and get out transition. Of these numbers here, you can see there's a lot of impressive numbers. The scoring margin, number one, field goals allowed. We've gone through the defense. This is a team that is fourth in Division One in offense. So you put that offense with this defense, and there's no surprise why they're undefeated and number one in the country. You've got to be assignment specific. You've got to be game plan, game plan specific when you play South Carolina because they can beat you in so many different ways. They can match up with you in so many different ways. And we talked about the bench a lot as well. Even if you're close, they tend to wear you down in the second half because they go and they utilize that 34 points a game off the bench really well. South Carolina has doubled up Alabama so far here at Colonial Life Arena, looking for at least a share of the regular season title. They would be the number one seed in the SEC tournament over in Greenville because they have the tiebreaker against second place LSU. Eric Freak, Christy Thomas, Scuddy, our crew here in Columbia as South Carolina looks for their 56th consecutive home win. Johnson for Watkins. For Wiley off the Watkins screen. Kitts has been really strong on the glass here, determined to get those second chances here in the second half. That's the thing about Chloe Kitts. I feel like she's one of those young ladies. At the end of a game, you look down at the stat sheet and you're like, no way. And she's got a double double because she just continues to do the little things. She defends, she keeps balls alive, she grabs the rebounds and gets to the free throw line. We touched on it earlier in that come from behind win against Georgia. She had 12 points, eight came in the third quarter. She had seven rebounds, but it's one of those games where she did a lot of the little things and you could see her more and more getting more comfortable with her voice and communicating on defense and getting things organized on that end of the court, which is so important for the South Carolina team. Well, I feel like she's a point forward a lot of times in the half court offense for the Gamecocks because when she can get the ball at the high post, she's so good at feeding the five down low or creating her own shot opportunity. Off the miss, the foul is no good, and there's another rebound for who else but Chloe Kitts. That's her seventh rebound for Wiley. On the spin for Wiley, for Kitts. Back to Kitts, trying to move inside, blocked out of bounds by Cunningham. Should Johnson have taken that three there, wide open in front of the South Carolina bench? Based on the fans behind us, yes. I'm asking your opinion. <laughs> I would have said yes. I mean, again, you have one of the top rebounding teams in the country. Put it up there. We know how well Tessa Johnson can shoot the ball from deep as well. Bree Hall. Hall off the dribble on the run for two. Credit Sanaya Fagan with that because she just cleared out the Crimson Tide defense to create that path for her to get to the rim and score. Launch from the corner, off the mark. The save attempt is thrown to Full Wiley. And it's going to be South Carolina basketball. Sarah Ashley Barker is back on the bench, which is good news, but that camera shot does not look like she's very comfortable. The supreme competitor. So I agree with you because I think if she was okay, she would be begging Christy Curry to go back in the game she right would, now. She probably. She might not even ask Christy Curry. She just would have gone to the yes. scorers table, and Christy would have been all right with it. I think Sarah Ashley Barker for Wiley hangs and finishes, and a chance for a three-point play. Malaysia for Wiley. Just typical day at the office for Full Wiley. The ability to hang and finish in so many different ways. This young lady is just special with a kiss off the glass. I'm Finishes still impressed. Three point play. You didn't seem all that impressed. I, I just feel like she's raised the bar so high for you. I'm not impressed. I, I'm just saying, like, you just seem like, oh. I've been, I've been just, waving the Malaysia pom-poms all season. That's just Malaysia here. doing Malaysia things. That was kind of. I think it's great for basketball that she's just brought that 
foul here. But before that, she just brought that style, that, that extra something that makes the game great. Well, I'm still in awe. Again, she's surveying the whole way as she gets down. And it's the body movement. Like, she practically turns her body and still has the touch to put it in. So that's three on full Wiley. And to the line goes Jessica Timmons. I got to say, today when Dawn Staley said that she wants Malaysia full Wiley to be more like Raven in terms of she wants her to be more all gas all the time. Wants her to hunt her shot and create more when she has the ball. I just kind of shuddered for opponents around the country. An aggressive pass there from Full Wiley. Yeah, that was an eyebrow raiser because the way Full Wiley plays, taking those chances, those highlight real style plays, because that's her game. Dawn's not, she's not putting a blanket on that saying, let's just tamp that down a little bit. She wants more, and she wants her to just go at a harder pace and a little bit more aggressive than she has been. Well, I think that's the greatness of Dawn Staley, too, in terms of her coaching ability. She always knows what these young ladies' full potential is. Fagan. That's what she pushes them to. Fagan and one. Chance for a three-point play for Sanaya Fagan. Sanaya Fagan can play positions three through four for the Gamecocks. There you see, she knows she's got the mismatch. Just keeps backing. <laughs> the defender down, and this is what's so nice. She's getting physical with the defender, but then has the nice soft touch as she makes the release. I think, you see that smile? You know who I think that smile is from and who, who she was just going back and forth with? Her head coach. That's <laughs> the kind of relationship of those two have. I think Dawn was kind of saying, you know, you can do that all the time. I wish you would. Inside, no rebound for Johnson. Johnson for Fagan. Tessa Johnson with a smile because I don't think she saw Nye there defensively, but Fagan just goes up and makes a great play for the finish. You can see it's a 12-1 run over the last two minutes for the South Carolina team, final minute of the quarter. Nye off the mark for three, and here comes Full Wiley. Full Wiley across half court. Full Wiley behind the back, and a tough one to handle for Walker. Cody the other way, no, nope. and a foul called on Johnson. Don Staley told us today her bigs have to get better at anticipating the passes from Full Wiley. That time, Walker not ready for it. Otherwise, that should have been an easy layup. Timmons back to the free throw line. Six of nine from the line today. She has attempted all of the free throws so far tonight here for Alabama. And made the most of her trips to the line. Game high 15 for the junior from Charlotte. Final seconds of the third quarter in a 30 point game. Johnson into the hands of Full Wiley, defended by McQueen. Full Wiley with three, with two, step back three. Thought she got hit on the arm, nothing was called, and that will do it for the third quarter. South Carolina outscored Alabama 25 17. A little bit of that Full Wiley razzle dazzle as well in that third quarter. Well, the Full Wiley effect in the third quarter, six points. The play of the game, the little razzle and dazzle, according to Eric. She's just good. <laughs> so today, what's on the line in this fourth quarter? Clinching at least a share of the regular season championship in the SEC. Fourth quarter is underway. Pow, pow. 
for Full Wiley. Full Wiley on the take. Full Wiley with the finish. I think that's the part when Dawn Staley talks about Full Wiley being a little bit more aggressive. She wants her to score a little bit more, too. Wants her to just look for her shot, get to the basket a bit more. Well, I think what we've seen from Full Wiley is that she can get her shot anytime she wants. I think that's what Dawn's talking about. Go create for yourself or create for others. Walker fighting hard in there for South Carolina. Alabama still with it. Timmons into a three. No, that's Full Wiley getting a hand on it. Flipped underneath for Cody by Rachel Douglas, who's into the game. Again, Alabama playing without Sarah Ashley Barker, who left in the third quarter with an injury. We have not received an update on her prognosis, but she does have her shooting shirt back on. She is on the bench watching, but towards the end of the bench. So looks certainly like we will not see her again tonight. The question would be, her availability for the next game, which is Sunday against Mississippi State. That won't drop for Fagan. Timmons. That won't drop. Cody's got it. Cody is fouled by Walker. I think this is an important quarter for Essence Cody. We talked about how much she was going to be challenged here this evening. Three lessons being, or three quarters are being learned. Now it's the fourth quarter. Can you apply those lessons and build on this game? What are some of the things that you like about Cody's game? I know Christy Curry really thinks she's just scratched the surface of how good she can be. Well, I think, first of all, she needs to stay active on the glass. That's what she always has provided for the Crimson Tide this season. Second chance opportunity. She's a good screener. Today, she's gotten vertical a lot. I think she's trying to be big, like South Carolina's bigs, versus staying in an athletic stance, and that slowed her down in terms of her ability to catch and score. Well, Wiley picks up her fourth. William McQueen to the free throw line. First player other than Timmons to attempt a free throw tonight for Alabama. She's an excellent free throw shooter. Substitutions for South Carolina. Walker checks out. Full Wiley checks out as well. Kitts and Watkins on the floor right now for South Carolina. Pow Pow, can't sit back on her. Alabama doesn't pay the price though. And here comes Timmons on the push. Kick to McQueen, sets for three, and it has it. And Alabama got really lucky off the defensive end but because McQueen went under that on-ball screen, but then made it pay because they were able to get out and transition with numbers. Johnson on the drive, that won't drop, but she'll go to the line to shoot a couple. That three by McQueen, just the second for Alabama tonight, two for 15 from outside the three-point line. And we are talking about the second best team in the SEC in SEC play with made threes, averaging over eight a game coming into tonight. Johnson, 76% from the free throw line this season. Makes both. Here's Alabama. McQueen. So you talked about Essence Cody finding something to build on here in the fourth quarter. You could say the same thing for this Alabama team. They've got a very important game coming up on Sunday against Mississippi State, the team that they began the night tied with in the SEC standings in fifth place. You never want, when you take on a great team like South Carolina, for one loss here today to carry over, you'd have that hangover for that next game. You've got to be able to flush it or find something to build off of, and that's what this fourth quarter's about. Yeah, sometimes you have letdowns on a win. I've seen the South Carolina affect teams after the loss because they put so much into it. They didn't turn it over, turn it around quickly, and that's going to be key for Alabama unless they can have some kind of dramatic comeback here in the fourth quarter. Watkins will head to the free throw line. Four now on Cody, so she'll go to the bench as Meg Newman comes back on. Here we go. 
I mean, Eric, you mentioned Alabama in terms of turning it around for Mississippi State, but this is an Alabama team that right now Charlie Cream has as a nine seed. They're still playing because coaches always talk about getting to 500 in SEC play to ensure that they can get in the NCAA field. Alabama has a strong resume right now coming into tonight at 27 in the net, but they are seeking that one more win to make sure they can get to 500 in the SEC. Timmons, and that's going to be a foul on Newman. Setting the screen, it'll be South Carolina basketball. That's four on Newman. Johnson to Hall. Hall. Travels. 14th turnover for South Carolina. They struggled with turnovers, especially in the first quarter. Got off to a slow start. Dawn Staley has had happier looking moments <laughs> in her 24 seasons as a head coach, going for career win number 600 today. Now I can't get it to drop. Kitts and Pow Pow knock it out of bounds. Alabama ball. South Carolina's next game, they'll be at Kentucky on Sunday and Arkansas next Thursday before they wrap up the regular season at home against Tennessee. Tennessee idle tonight as well as Vanderbilt. Tennessee looked pretty good last game out against Vanderbilt. They'll host LSU on Sunday, the Lady Vols will. I think Tennessee's just been on a run ever since they went to Tuscaloosa and lost there. Defense has picked up, and Rakia Jackson's just been playing really well. Tennessee's won two of three since their loss to Alabama. Much improved on defense. The one loss to South Carolina. 86-61 was the final in Nashville against Vandy last time out. Rakia Jackson, as Christy mentioned, playing well 24 in that game. McQueen with the kick. Timmons with a rhythm dribble, 4-3. Timmons having a good game here against the number one team in the country. She's got 20, her career in season high, 26 against Auburn in the first meeting with the Tigers this year. Good feed to Newman, rejected by Watkins, another block for South Carolina. 12 now on the game for South Carolina. Tipped away by Douglas. Kick to the corner. Three on the way is good. Tessa Johnson with the three. She's in the double figures now with 10. Tessa Johnson needs to give Chloe hit two of those points, because I don't even know how Chloe Kitts got that ball out to her in the corner. Watch out for Watkins defending out top of the perimeter. That pass is knocked away, but still controlled by Alabama. McQueen. Shot clock down to five. McQueen trying to take Kitts off the dribble, and does. 11 points for Loyal McQueen returning here to South Carolina. Her home state. Both Timmons and McQueen have done a much better job this second half of beating their player off the bounce to get to the rim. Watkins gets the offensive rebound off the kids miss. Pow Pow back out to the circle to reset here for South Carolina. Watkins. Watkins on the take and the foul called on Newman and Ashlyn Watkins will go to the free throw line. That's going to be five on Newman. That'll get us to our five-minute media timeout. It comes with 4.14 to go here in the fourth quarter with South Carolina in control in Columbia. South Carolina Gamecocks, four minutes and 14 seconds away from becoming the number one seed for the SEC tournament at Bon Secours Wellness Arena in Greenville. SEC tournament champions, they are the defending champs after knocking off Tennessee last year. Kentucky had that memorable run to the championship 
two years ago, but a lot of South Carolina championships hoping to add to it. They have a chance to add a regular season title to their trophy case here tonight with a victory. The more things change, the more they stay the same here. Retool, reload, lose five starters, and they are back as good. Of, and I th actually think in so many ways they are better than even a year ago. In what ways? I think they have more balanced scoring. Their pace is greater. We've talked about the three-point shooting. They can spread you out. They can beat you in a different ways, depending on if you want to go zone, they'll knock it down from deep. If you want to go player to player, they know how to execute and take advantage of their size down low. And their defense is pretty good, too. <laughs> As we've seen tonight, Alabama shooting 23% from the field, 18% from outside the three-point line. Watkins at the free throw line. Thirteen now for Ashlyn. Full Wiley back into the game, playing with the four fouls. Here's Fagan to Full Wiley, numbers the other way, and Full Wiley on the pull up. Can't get it to drop. Watkins was fouled trying to get it to Hall. So Watkins with the double double tonight. Her seventh double double and the ninth of her career. Cody just got called for her fifth foul. So now that's two bigs for Alabama who have fouled out of this game. Newman fouled out before the media timeout. Now Cody is done. She scored two points, had five rebounds for Alabama. It's. We talked about at the top of the telecast, you know, your essence, Cody, you walk into the gym and Camilla Cardozo's in street clothes. It doesn't mean it's going to be an easy night against the South Carolina front court because of that depth. I don't think anyone thinks anything's easy against the South Carolina ball club. They've got the versatility. They've got the quality depth. Already this evening, the bench has accounted for 28 points. I'll make that 30 now. Watkins checks out 14 points, 10 rebounds. Three blocks. The final tally for the sophomore. Nye slammed on the brakes. And the rebound pulled down, but then thrown away. Weathers kicks it out to McQueen. Wide open three. Off the mark, rebound. Hall fighting against Williams. Well, the commissioner's in the building tonight. Greg Sankey is courtside. You know what that means? That means there may be a trophy handed out here tonight. So stick around. 3.15 to go. Again, a win here today. South Carolina clinches at least a share of the regular season title. They would just need one win or an LSU loss the rest of the way for the outright title. McQueen with the basket for Alabama. Three minutes to go here in Columbia. Eric, I just looked at the stat sheet, and as hard as tonight has been for Alabama, they are only down two in the rebounding battle. Surprises you. It, it's remarkable to me considering the high. I mean, we went through the starting lineups today. There's not one player that Alabama had a size advantage over South Carolina. Again, at the end of the day, it's not about rebounds, it's about points. But if you're looking for some things to build on, that's one area that I think they can hold their hat on and be proud of tonight. So there are Alabama's a minus three in turnovers. That's full widely hanging in the air. She'll go to the free throw line. Minus three in turnover margin. They're minus two in rebounding margin. The bench points is another story. You can say it. It's a lot to a little. <laughs> 28 nothing. I'm going to question stat broadcast on this because Watkins, I take it back, Watkins started tonight. That's where yep. I messed up earlier. So it is only 28 bench points. Excuse me. My bad. Full Wiley at the free throw line for a couple with 242 to go. We mentioned what's ahead for South Carolina before heading to Greenville for the SEC tournament.
Nine points four for Wiley. Four in double figures for South Carolina. They've got 70 on the board. They're still 17 under their season average. Douglas will try it. Almost had it. Full Wiley with the rebound. Full Wiley with the feed to Hall. Kick out to Full Wiley. Deep three on the way as well. Short. She knew it right away and she wanted to go grab that before it hit the floor. Well, that she took it right in front of her head coach. So I think she was also just running away. <laughs> that, that's a move I would have done anyway. <laughs> just to get as far away from yes. your head coach as possible. Yes. Game one of our doubleheader, game two is the rematch between Auburn and LSU coming up at the top of the hour in Baton Rouge. Of course, Auburn with that thrilling win, that upset victory at Neville Arena earlier this season. So LSU looking to pay back Tigers and keep their run going. Tigers have won four in a row. Jana Cunningham getting frustrated because she had the seal on the undersized for Wally, wanted the ball, was calling for it. Crimson Tide guards just couldn't get her the touch. Weathers will launch for three. No good. Picked up by Thompson. Johnson rather. Good drive and the finish by the freshman. Well, we talk a lot about for Wiley, but I think Tessa Johnson's got just as much upside. Young lady who can obviously is a great three point shooter, just court savvy as well. Good defense by Walker. Walker getting extra minutes here tonight. She got early minutes in this game from Dawn Staley. And she's played well in the absence of Cardoso tonight. Entry pass is knocked away by Cunningham. It will remain South Carolina basketball. One oh nine to go before another South Carolina win. Fagan couldn't get it. Fagan's not done. Now McQueen's got it. Minutes go. McQueen on the drive. She's fouled. She'll shoot two. McQueen and Timmons in the second half have been on the aggressive and trying to get downhill, and that's led to some offensive success for the Crimson Tiger in the second half. So it's been an interesting night for Dawn Staley with 599 career wins between her time at Temple and South Carolina. No. Camilla Cardoso tonight. Raven Johnson just played a couple of minutes in the second half. We have not seen Raven at all here today as it's been a comfortable lead and it is as you mentioned before long hard season you want to be playing into April so you're going to buy some minutes buy some rest whenever you can. That was apparently the game plan for Cardoso tonight. There's Fagan with the rebounds. And picked up by Full Wiley. McQueen back behind the play. No push here from South Carolina. Bill works some clock. Four seconds between the game clock and the shot clock. South Carolina will have to shoot once. Coaching staff tell Full Wiley, you need to shoot because of the difference in the game clock. Full Wiley. As her shot blocked. Picked up by McQueen. And McQueen will dribble it out. And that will do it. 56 straight wins at home. The number one seed in the SEC tournament. Career win number 600 for Dawn Staley. It's another win for South Carolina. They clinch at least a share of the regular season title in the SEC. Well, it wasn't always pretty for South Carolina, but they did it with their defense. They got out transition, and the bigs showed up in a major way in terms of paint points and point production. So congratulations to Dawn Staley joining the 600 win club and yes they are bringing a table out onto the court and a trophy so there will be a trophy presentation here at midcourt. We'll let Dari and the crew bring you some of that 72 44 the final Dari it's all yours. 
South Carolina just wrapped up an eighth conference regular season championship. Greg Sankey, the commissioner, there to present the prize. Hey, good evening. I'm Greg Sankey, commissioner of the Southeastern Conference, and it's a pleasure to be here, a privilege to be here. And I want to say to the Gamecocks, thank you for being part of the Southeastern Conference. I had a chance to... I was at a game here a long time ago, those early years when you're trying to get to 3,000 and 5,000. And I just want to thank the fans for what you do to make this conference special, to make the University of South Carolina special. We have a trophy tonight. We'll see if there's more trophies in the future this year, right? But it's an honor. It's an honor to say congratulations to the Gamecocks on earning at least part of the Southeastern Conference Championship this year. And based on the trend lines, it's looking good that there'll only be one of those. So congratulations. It's an honor to be here. Thank you for what you do, and thank you for what you mean, all of you, for women's basketball. Thank you. Thank you, um, thank you Commissioner. Um, just want to say, um, I, I don't know how long ago, our, our very first one, um, we got a chance to experience um, this at Colonial Life Arena. I don't know which one. I don't know which year it was. I think it was 2000 and 13, 2000, 2013, and um, you know the the late great um, commissioner of our conference, uh, um, Commissioner Slive, presented this trophy to us. I'll I'll never forget it. Um, because he was a great man who, who told us, he told us to go back in our communities and, and fill this arena up. So I want to thank our fans for making it feel like a championship every single time that we come into this gym. You created it. You created it. And we're producing championships. So thank you so very much for all you do to help us bring home the hardware that you help us bring home. Congratulations to our team who worked hard. And gotta give it up to our coaching staff who work tirelessly to ensure to ensure they're not the ones who give up a, a defeat. <laughs> we, we're undefeated right now, so everybody's undefeated in scouting reports. So that's always a great thing. And then um, to the leaders of our of our university, President Amaritas to the leader of our athletics department, um, Coach Tanner, thank you for allowing us to do this. You know, you guys, I mean, you, you said if, if, if you build it, they will come. Thank you for coming. Appreciate it, y'all. Eight conference titles, 44 straight regular season league wins, extending their own record, 56 straight home wins. How about 28 in a row by double digits? It's Words do not adequately describe what she and this program has Well, when you, when you reference the 2012 and 2013 season, you got to talk about the Tiffany Mitchell, the Atlanta Coates, um, Alicia Welch, making sure that the South Carolina players stayed home. Welch yep. was from South Carolina Coates, and that's who got it started for this South Carolina team to then go on to win all these championships. Well, when they have the hats out, oh, we got to make sure everybody can see that. Hat and T-shirt game, they call it. Congratulations. Added to the collection. Regular season champs, number one seed, 600th career win, a lot to get to. Let's just start with what it means to have another trophy for your trophy case. you got to keep expanding the trophy it's awesome. case. It's awesome. I mean, it's awesome. Um, you know, I, I, I did not envision, like, any of this. I did envision national championships, but uh, what we've been able to do in this conference and how tough it is. Like, it, it really is a tough conference. Um, to put, you know, some um, some some awesome seasons together, um, it, it means that we're trying to do things the right way, and we try to get the people in here that really understand 
how to play the game, want to play the game the right way. Um, and they win, and it, it produces championships. And I'm, I'm super proud, not just of this team, I'm, I'm super proud of this team, but just what we've been able to do, the, the, the players' commitment, the parents' commitment, you know, everybody, the, the coaches who come in and out of uh, South Carolina all commit to, to winning championships, and you don't always you don't always get them. You may have the best team, but you don't always get championships. And I don't know if we've ha always had the best team, um, but the basketball guys have a way of... Uh, <laughs> Uh, of, of, uh, You've been pretty good consistently, yeah. let's say that. Let's just say that. The gods have smiled on you, that's for sure. Don, you, you brought up Mike's life. So i got to believe that you've done a little reminiscing as tonight approached. Can you just, some of the highlights for you since you came to South Carolina? You know, I, I equate uh, Commissioner Slide to the godfather. Like, he was like the godfather. When he came into the room, you know, you, you, you sit, you know, upright, and you listen. You know the man has... Uh, had so much experience just bringing championships and notoriety to our to our conference. And I, I remember one spring meeting, we asked for the world as coaches, as women's basketball coaches. And, you know, I think he got upset because we weren't producing. We weren't producing um, in the NCAA tournament. We weren't producing on our campuses by putting people in the stands. And he told us, he did, go out into your communities, put people in the stands because – you know, I just I just got you this television deal. We don't want to see empty seats on, on TV. And I took that to heart. And I try to make sure that um, I I go on into commu into community in our communities and live by his words because if you actually do it, it's it's an awesome and beautiful thing that that's created. And I, I hope that everybody gets to experience what our players and our coaches get to experience every single day that we walk into Colonial Life Arena. It is, it is entertainment. It is, you know, a hodgepodge of people who come together for two hours to cheer on our team, and it looks nothing like any other, any other athletic um, event in the state of South Carolina. And I'm, I'm super proud of that. Uh, on a personal note, do you know where you were November 17th, 2000? Was it here? No. <laughs> the answer is no. 2000. That's Temple. That's Temple. That yeah. was your very first win, and tonight is number 600 in your career. <laughs> wow. You haven't aged a bit. <laughs> you look great. You look great. You're still winning. You're just hitting your stride, and so many more wins to come. I, I will say this. My Temple days prepared me for, like, right now. Like, the, the way that my former players loved up on me, the way that they challenged me, they really helped me become a better coach because of them being the first. And they loved hard, and I loved harder. <laughs> and now here we are. You do everything hard. I mean, it's just like <laughs> do, you don't take the easy way out. <laughs> Dawn, congratulations, and uh, hopefully many more uh, things to celebrate for you and your team this year. Thank you.